Hey guys, Jay with the Douchebag Brigade here. And it's a big shout out to all my magnetites. So, I'm continuing on from the video I made last, which is a discussion based on where you should start in the Mega 10 gaming process if you're new. And uh, last time I started you guys off in the PS2 area, and I felt that that was a great place for people who were new to the genre to start. But I'm also going, that was also people who maybe had no experience with any Mega 10 at all. Now I'm going to be discussing maybe people who have touched on one or two games. Most likely you guys have played Persona 5. And so I'm going to give you a little bit of a uh, where to on how to, how to go from Met Persona 5 to other games. Now, it's not the easiest transition. I'm already going to state that because if you've played Persona 5, you've basically gotten the best graphics that Persona has, that the Mega 10 games have to offer. Uh, tweaked gameplay. It's kind of a, you know, it's a, everything's going to be a little lackluster from certain standpoints. However, it's really dependent on how much you like certain aspects of games. Persona 5 is a fun and great game. There's really nothing to knock about Persona 5. However, again, that's a character-driven game with some interesting story elements. However, if character-driven games are your cup of tea, and you've probably heard of 3 and 4, and you've probably played them at this point, but if I were to give you another area to start with, considering that you like the character-driven storyline and plot elements, I would say give Persona 1 and 2 Innocent Sin and 2 Eternal Punishment a shot. Now, I know what you're saying. You've probably seen videos of the gameplay or the graphics and been like, no, that's not for me. But I'm going to implore you to give it a shot because a lot of people, like myself included, I first played Persona 2 Eternal Punishment on a, I believe it was a translation hack, almost a decade ago. And, uh, you know, I played it on a, P a PSX uh, emulator. And I can tell you that within an hour, I was like, okay, where are the social links to, to help develop my persona so I can attain ones that are a higher level? Also, I was like, wait a minute, where are the card games so I can get new persona? Then I was also thinking, wait a minute, where's the uh, press turn system? So, there are a lot of elements that are very different. And I'm not going to say that Persona 1 and 2 are really akin to 3, 4, and 5, because there is a strong variation in the gameplay. However, the story-driven concepts are fairly similar, and there is a lot of character uh, initiation and options. Um, in both games, you have a large roster to choose from. And you get a lot of opportunity to utilize different characters, if you'd like. So, with that being said, the reason why I picked this isn't just because of the similar story or character-driven elements that Persona's come to be known for. Obviously, that's a portion of this, but it's not the focal point. I feel that when you play this game, certain key elements will keep you engaged. The fact that Igor's still around... Uh, well, was around and is still around is a, is a strong selling point. And I think that it really motivates people to stay involved and interested. Another piece of that information that I would say uh, stays true is you get a little bit of the foundational support behind the Velvet Room. Also, you find out about that butterfly that keeps flying around in 3, 4, and 5 but has no explanation. Um, enter Filemon. And you get a lot more information than what you're currently getting to kind of give you some background story to not only some SMT plot points like SMTF, but you get a little bit of connections like from 2 to 3. So, with that being said, 1 and 2, your biggest issue is probably going to be from a gameplay standpoint. Resistances, weaknesses, they still play a role, but this time you don't have the option to have a press turn system. So it's something you'll have to get accustomed to. Also, if you're playing Persona 1, there's a grid-based battle system. And I know what you're thinking, so like an SRPG. Not exactly. It's more like an element of tactical addition, but it doesn't overhaul the overall turn-based system completely. It really just means understanding what, what, what kind of attack you're using, what kind of range that attack has, 
and taking it from there. And I can tell you that I truly enjoyed Persona 1's battle system. But a lot of people aren't going to enjoy that. A lot of people are going to want to play a game that's interchangeable with the one they're used to. But I think if you give this an opportunity to, to play out, you'll see that it's fun. The animations take a little bit of time, but they're kind of nice to watch, to be honest. And the way that your uh, persona both level up and rank up is really fun. And it adds a real additional piece to the gameplay. There's a mutation system, the evolving portion, uh, stat mutation. I mean, there's so many things that are no longer used. Fusion spells, which I, I, I know you can get some of that in Persona 3, but it's really not used them. At least I never really used it. Um, but keep in mind, I mean, there's a lot that you can do here to uh, to have fun with this game. And it's a, it really is a lot of fun. Um, I would say that P1's going to be a little bit harder for you to get through because it's a little more dated. Um, but it's a great story, especially if you pick up the PSP version. It's fantastic. Graphics are nice, 3D models are nice, the updates around certain menu systems are nice, and the game as a whole is a lot of fun. When you play, when you play the original Eternal Punishment, you're going to have to play the PSX version. And so the enjoyment behind that version is that when you're playing it, the battles work in a system that moves quickly. So it's not like you're not, you don't have the ability to uh, have these battles move. They do, and really your only option here is to you set up your team ahead of time, you can stop it at any time, and you tell them what to do. And the rest is kind of done in a somewhat semi-automatic turn-based battle. But you're constantly changing what you're doing based on if you need to heal, if you need to switch up the attack style, if you need to switch out for MP. There's a lot that you can do. And when it comes to P2 Innocent Sin, the PSP remake that's in English, it actually gives you more of a menu option like P3 or P4. So that means you have an opportunity to actually uh, control each hand. Each turn, I should say. Sorry, I was playing poker earlier and I said hand. So, with that in mind, that being said, I think it is very important for you to keep in, in, in conceptual uh, mind frame that this game is going to have a lot of fun element pieces that are mindful of the games you're more accustomed to. And it's not as big of a deviation as going to a Shin Megami Tensai game or going to uh, a Digital Devil game or anything like that. I mean, you're, or a Last Bible game even. I mean, you're staying on course. And I think for a lot of people that matters. But so that's what my recommendation would be for people who are versed in Persona. Um, I, I think if you've played P5... Or you've, even if you've played the, uh, the last three games, 3, 4, and 5, you've probably been in your comfort zone for some time. You might have maybe even... You might have reached out to PQ and PQ2, which are fun games in their own right. Not my favorite, but they're fun. They're different. They're more Etrian Odyssey-based. But if you've played those, that's probably as far as your Megatan experience has gone because you haven't really felt the... You know, the, either you don't have the knowledge uh, behind the moniker with SMT because maybe you've only gotten five and three and four, you know, they have that moniker here in the United States. Um, or you're kind of like, well, this is SMT and I don't really know that I want to deviate to anything harder. You know, there's a lot of things that could come up that might make you think, I don't know if I'm ready to move on to a different style of this game. But you're really selling yourself short if you don't give yourself the opportunity to play another game in the series, especially one like Persona 1 and 2, which are the foundational pieces. In fact, if you enjoy 1 and 2, I would even recommend that you go as far as to play Shin Megami Tensai If. It's a stretch now. We're not playing the same game here. It is a bit of a, of a pull because it's more of an SMT game than it is a Persona game, but at least you'll get to see some connections and storyline elements and different pieces that matter in order to help you really determine the game that you probably love. So that's my recommendation as far as where to go if you play, if you're new to Mega 10, but you've at least played the Persona games. That's really a, a nice little stepping stone. Um, you know, 
Let me know your opinion, and if you guys have played multiple games and you don't think this is a good path, certainly leave it below and give me some reasons why so that I can uh, make another video that says, don't do that. Anyway, my magnetites, I'm out. Have a good rest of your Thanksgiving weekend.